So welcome you after, after lunch. I hope you ate well. Uh, I know you're going to be digesting right now. <coughs> so the, your rank you will be filled with those digestion processes and there won't be much place for, for listening. But I hope I won't bore you and you, you won't be sleeping. Uh, so I look like this on the internet and I need an update of the photo. So if you have a good, a good camera and you would like to take, me, take a picture of me while I'm speaking, it would be great. Uh, so, uh, I work for a company called Wu Media, uh, and I thank them very much for allowing me to be here today. I'm also a student at Silesian University of Technology, uh, and I got into Elixir and Erlang through Google Summer of Code last year. Uh, it's a program for students to work on open source projects, and I worked on the Elixir database library. So, what's the plan for, for today? Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the <coughs> special processes, uh, later followed by the behaviors, and finished by custom behaviors, and that will be the bulk of the talk. Uh, I will tell you why they are interesting, and why we should be using more of them. Uh, okay, but we're going to start uh, with an experiment, uh, and I don't uh, I don't have in mind, uh, I don't know if you watched the movie, The Experiment, it won't be that violent. Uh, so the first question is, are you able to raise your hands? Yeah, you are, great. Uh, so, who you spawned and received and sent to implement a PMAP? Yeah, I think that's like a hello world of, of Erlang. Yeah? In other languages you print hello world, in Erlang like you do a parallel map. So, who wrote a gen server? And a behavior. Okay, I have less hands, so yeah. Uh, so, what behaviors do we get in ODP? Yeah. Like application, gen server, gen FSM, gen state, and wow, new, gen event and supervisor. So, we have now seven of them, a big change. Yeah. Uh, very interesting, like, yeah. You're talking only new things, yeah? nobody knew those. So I promise you, that was probably the last things that are known to everybody and so obvious. Uh, so, what are the use cases of behaviors? And I see two main use cases. One is those message-driven behaviors that we find in OTP, like Gen Server, when each callback is called upon receiving of a message. Uh, but there are also the data, I'll call them data-driven behaviors, where they aren't actually related to processes as much as regular processing of something. And the and it's it's not like they are like it's one or the other. It's rather uh, a spectrum uh, where you have uh, each behavior falls somewhere. And for a long time, I thought that these data-driven behaviors that are used similarly to interfaces in many OO languages uh, were something that were used mostly in Elixir provoked by a post by uh, uh, Jose from, uh, from, I think, uh, uh, over like, nearly two years ago, uh, where he was talking about mocking and, and uh, contracts and proposed establishing contracts between modules uh, uh, by introducing behaviors. Uh, but I think, but uh, when preparing for this talk, I found that they are also uh, present in many early libraries. Uh, so we all know that gen server is emergence. It's this thing given us by the God and inspired. It's not implemented, it's discovered. And we all know that. And we all know the path to the, to the enlightenment when you implement like a single message passing and then extract the generic part. And here you go, you have discovered a gen server. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about the little details of how uh, Gen Server is actually implemented in OTP, how it's handled, and how we can do something similar to gain the same power. So the answer to how this is implemented is OTP special processes. And the special, the special process is a contract of sort. What a process should do, how it should be uh, created, how it should respond to various things, 
in order to play well with other OTP uh, parts. So we, when we follow the special process contract, we gain a lot of things. For example, our processes fit nicely into supervision trees, they support the sys module for debugging, uh, and process system messages, uh, for example, those uh, used by the system to suspend the process and restart it uh, during the hot upgrades. Uh, and this is important because when, when our process uh, uh, we can use all the tools that OTP gives us to introspect our system uh, and gain knowledge about what is happening there. And as we learned previously, it's very important to, to know what our processes are doing. So, how do we implement a special process? Well, there's a lot. Right? We, first, we need to use the proclate-like uh, module to start our process instead of spawn. Uh, we need to initialize the debug options. We need to, uh, when, we, when we've done our initialization of the process, we respond to starting with, again, with proxy init hack, which may make the, the start link function return in the caller. And whenever we receive this message uh, with a tuple of three elements, uh, with first element being system <coughs> atom, we need to call the sys handle system message function and this function does not return instead it calls back uh, either the system continue callback on our module or the system terminate callback uh, there's a lot of this like, this is a lot of work isn't that something simpler? and there is, we can reuse things we already have most not our gen server so we haven't talked about the interface of Gen Server, so I'll talk briefly about that. So we have those six callbacks, actually there are seven, and the seventh one is important uh, when defining uh, our own behaviors. So those are init, handle, cast, handle, call, handle, info, terminate, and code change. And the last one is the format status. This callback allows us when uh, reports are printed by the, by the system, uh, for example, when our process dies or something goes off, or when we are inspecting the, our process in, in observ Observer. This allows us to show only the user state of the process and not our own state that we, we are handling inside the Gen Server to handle the user process. So it gives us this nice way of hiding the details of implementation of our behavior while still allowing the user to see what he is doing. So we have the Gen Server, so we use Gen Server for everything. Yeah, we do pooling with Gen Server, databases connection with Gen Server, web servers with Gen Servers, chat rooms with Gen Servers, data stream with Gen Servers. Well, this awfully reminds me of a sentence that if all you have is a hammer, uh, everything looks like a nail. So here we start to talk about other uh, things about custom behaviors. So the first one. Uh, first, I would like to talk about is the connection. It comes from the Elixir connection library, and it's an abstraction on top of connections, where you have the uh, callbacks, regular callbacks you find in, in a Gen server, plus two additional one, connect and disconnect, uh, that are called to connect your your server to something and disconnect to disconnect it from something. Additionally, you can return. Uh, when you're returning uh, tuples from your callbacks like reply or no reply, you have additional two options for the first atom. It can be either connect or disconnect. Uh, there is also a back off if you tried to connect in but failed. Uh, and I think there's, there's one more for the disconnect case. But it's not, uh, not that important. It's a wonderful library that allows to hide the paths uh, that are the same in every connection because after we disconnect from a service we're going to try to reconnect and, uh, and when we initialize our, our library we're going to be connecting to this and the additional advantage is that the uh, con initial connection uh, is done asynchronously from the perspective of the calling of the starting process for example the supervisor but the process only accepts messages after we've, have, we've established the initial connection. So, on top of the connection library, there's another Elixir library that I would, I would like to, to mention. 
and it's called DB Connection. This library, as you probably can guess, abstracts connections to databases. So here, here we see we've gained a lot of callbacks, but we've also lost some. We've lost the generic gen server callbacks that allowed us to handle any message we, we wanted. Instead, we get a set of messages for handling a specific use cases where database connection can be used. So we have connect, disconnect. Uh, uh, connect it replaces the traditional init. Uh, we have disconnect where we disconnect it, and ping. That is, uh, there's a, a automatic pinging of the of the database since the connection wasn't used for for some time. The database will close it, so we want to prevent it. Uh, there's callbacks for checking out the state of the connection. I will talk about this more a bit later. Uh, and there are callbacks for handling transactions. I handle begin, commit, and rollback. And there are callbacks for handling queries, where we want usually to prepare a query first and then call execute the prepared uh, uh, statement uh, in order to, to, to gain an efficiency. And if you want to, to close the prepared statement, we have handle close. And recently, they landed the support for native cursors in the databases with handle declare, we create the cursor, where first, next, and the allocate, we handle the life cycle of the cursor. This is a very interesting thing because for many database interaction libraries that I found, uh, when you have some, like some streaming access to the database, it's usually implemented either as limit plus offset and going through the table, or if you have, but there, there's, there's a chance that you're going to miss some elements if they were inserted while you, while you were executing, you are going to execute twice over some, some uh, items. But many databases support native cursors. Uh, I know of Postgres, MySQL, Mongo, probably others too. And why not use them? Uh, and accompanying to the DB connection is another behavior called DB connection pool that abstracts O. Oh, I forgot to talk about this out-of-state pro out uh, process here, I think. So the idea behind it is that uh, when we receive data from the database, it's a lot of data, and sending data between processes is costly. So instead of receiving the data from the database in the connection process, we're going to check out the socket to the process that actually wants the data, stream the data directly there, and check the, uh, check the, the socket back into the connection process. And the library takes care of properly monitoring this and handling uh, cases where the process that checked out the socket dies suddenly uh, and uh, other cases like this. So the pool uh, is a very interesting approach for abstracting over pools. Like how many implementations of pools are there? Like, there's a lot of them. Each, each one has its use cases, uh, of course, but can we find something common across all of them and have an abstraction that we use in a pool and later we configure somewhere which implementation we actually want to use. So for example we could switch from, from a pool boy to do something else if we, if we want. And uh, DB connection comes with two built-in uh, pools. One is implemented over pool boy, which is a single option. The other one is implemented over as broker which uses soldier times for handling the queues of, of requests and, uh, and connections. And here we have some callbacks that are common across uh, pools to check out the resource, check in uh, back, disconnect is called when our uh, resource died when it was disconnected, and stop to stop the resource. And on top of all those connections, on the connection library, DB connection, DB connection pool, builds Ecto, the database library for Elixir. And here we have the high level behavior of a database adapter that does uh, various things. Yeah? We have ensure started to start all the applications that need to be started in order for the, for the, the adapter to work. We have child spec to start the, uh, the adapter inside the supervision tree load those dumpers auto generate for proper dumping and loading the data when it's coming from the database or into the database, 
prepare, execute, insert, or insert updated need for query, the database of transaction support. Uh, there are additional extensions for storage management, so creating database, dropping them, migrations, and dumping the database state. Right? So, and we can see that from the beginning, from the initial gen server, going through the connection, the connection, pooling, adapters, we're building higher and higher abstractions that allow us to have generic things, but specific for a particular use case. And this allows, for, and for example, the DB Connection library is used by uh, those three databases I mentioned earlier, so Postgres, MySQL, and Mongo, to, to manage the common things for all databases in one place. And we gain customizable pooling and things like that as a bonus. So that was all about data. Uh, so maybe we'll switch to, to some other. And another library where there are a lot of behaviors is Cowboy and Ranch. Uh, so the main behavior in Ranch is the Ranch Transport behavior that defines callbacks for accepting sockets, connecting them, communicating with the sockets of a particular uh, kind. So it can be a, a raw TCP connection, it can be an HTTP connection, it can be a WebSocket connection whatever we want. But what is interesting is that we also, apart from, from the callbacks that are related to many processes, we also have callbacks that are related to many configuration of the, of, the li of the library, like name, secure messages, and those are the callbacks that I mentioned in the beginning, calling them data callbacks, right? the data-driven callbacks. Uh, we are not only managing the process, but also with some data in a, in, in a way. Uh, there's also a branch protocol, which is very simple. It finds a start link. Now I, I would like to talk about Cowboy Middleware and Plug. And Plug is an application uh, in Alexia that abstracts the, connect, the HTTP connection. And it's built on a very basic principle of basically having a callback that's called sequentially, uh, uh, of having a set of sequential plugs called one by one. And exactly something, something very similar is cowboy middleware, defined by cowboy, but I don't think it's used that widely to define a reusable components. So they are same but different, but actually the same, cowboy and plug. But what I find interesting is that even though they are so similar, and they are used very differently. So Cowboy defines a single execute uh, callback, which receives some, the, the request and uh, some environment. And Plug has a very similar call, callback that receives the connection, that encloses all the state of the request and response and everything. And uh, options, where the, so those options are prepared by the init uh, callback, which is usually called at compile time to, to speed things to speed things up and not process all the options each time we call them at runtime. Uh, Cowboy also so the, the interesting thing is there uh, is here that for plug there are a lot of plugs defined as reusable components there are components for I know, authorizing users but also more low levels, things like processing particular headers. Uh, yet in Cowboy, I don't think there are, there are that many reusable components. And there are tools to build them, just nobody's doing this. Uh, another interesting protocol in Cowboy, the uh, behavior in Cowboy is the Cowboy REST behavior. This is a behavior where that allows to define in a very declarative way a REST endpoint. I think it's I, I did these callbacks because I think there's a bajillion of them, and this is a scientific term. Uh, but this is, uh, and there are like flow diagrams on the, in the documentation that explain how everything is wired together. And this is a very uh, interesting way to look at handling connections by declaring uh, what we can do with them. In, uh, and I think it's. Uh, it's a great way to, to abstract over, over rest and AP. 
APIs. And finally, I would like to talk about Phoenix <coughs> China, which, which is a behavior defined in Phoenix that abstracts a PubSub connection. So instead of init, we have join, when someone joins the, our, our network, uh, we have we're handling messages coming in, we handling messages coming out of the, of the connection, I will explain the star later, uh, we have handled info for out of band messages, terminate code change, as usual. The handle out has a star because it's handled a bit differently, since we usually don't process messages coming out uh, in any way, it was decided that by bypassing that we can make things much faster. If we're sending each, uh, if, if we're sending message to each uh, recipient, if we're sending the same message with an unprocessed to each recipient, uh, we don't have to uh, capture it in each channel and we can send it directly. Uh, so the handle out callback uh, has to be defined at compile time, if, and if it's not, it's uh, it's not uh, not called as an optimization. Uh, and in Hackney, the HTTP library, there's a Hackney pool handler uh, that uh, abstracts again over pools, but in a very different way, and. Uh, I didn't actually see in the wild implementations for this, but uh, it's also the same idea that we did somewhere else, abstracting over the pools. And the last, things I last thing I would like to mention is GenStage that we'll learn more about later. Uh, it's a behavior that abstracts over processing data streams. So, there's a good way to do behaviors, there's a bad way to do behaviors. That slide is more addressed to the Elixir users, because the bad way to do behaviors is with macros. And the first rule of the macro club is don't use macros. Uh, so I see a lot of libraries that try to do something like behaviors, but injecting a lot of code into your modules. And that's definitely not the way to do them, to do that. And I think uh, more elixir programmers should learn about proper behaviors, how to define them, how to use them. And so that was standing for the with custom behaviors. And do you have questions? Not compatible, but in principle, 
it's not difficult to say, like, a serializer, here's an interface for a serializer. And when everybody is complying to the, to the interface, it's much easier to switch it out, to change it to something else. <coughs> Thank you.